Shortly after Afghan media reported that more than 150 people, including Indians, have been abducted by the Taliban, fresh reports say they have now been released. Sources in the Indian government say authorities are in touch with all Indians who were captured and that they are safe now. Earlier, a source who was among the people picked up by the Taliban and managed to escape claimed Taliban members came near Kabul International Airport where they beat up several people and then captured over 150 people. He said that only few, including his wife, were able to escape by throwing themselves out of the vehicle. However, Taliban spokesperson Amdullah Wasik has rejected the abduction claims. The incident comes to fore amid Taliban placing security of Kabul in the hands of Adlai Haqqani Network, which has close ties with foreign jihadist groups, including a long-standing association with the Al-Qaeda. India's mission evacuation from Kabul is underway. 85 Indians have been evacuated from Kabul today. A similar exercise happened in 1992 when terrorists had taken control over Kabul. India Today's Shreya Chatterjee spoke to squadron leader Rajesh Kumar, who undertook the evacuation. What are the difficulties he faced and how it was different from today's evacuation? It's listening from the IAF veteran itself. You're talking about a lot of difficulties that you face when such operations happen. Uh, there's also a secrecy. There's also a secrecy that uh, needs to be maintained about when you are entering uh, Afghanistan. In the present situation, how do you see it to be difficult compared to what you guys did back in uh, 1992? In the present situation, so much of information is available. People know that uh, airport, it's difficult even now, it's not easy. Uh, the Taliban uh, can use shoulder-fired weapons which are very effective at low altitudes. But what we, uh, uh, we are gathering from all news channels, that the airfield is effectively under the control of Americans. Therefore, a certain amount of security is guaranteed. In our time, we were not, uh, we didn't have any information whether this airfield is under control of whom, what. It was only when we landed in uh, Mazar-e Sharif we realized that we are in a friendly territory. We didn't know till that time that uh, this is a friendly area. So you know, we are also seeing a lot of visuals where uh, these officials who are going into these op operations, they are facing uh, the Afghan nationals. There are a lot of apprehension there in Afghanistan. They also want to board these uh, aircrafts, which are only for evacuation purpose of certain nationals who are stuck over there. Uh, how difficult is it for for people who undertake these operations to overlook certain uh, humanitarian aspect and just focus on uh, these operations? I pity the crew members because anyone that they are leaving behind, they must be feeling so sorry for them. But seeing those visuals of people clinging on to the American aircraft or other aircrafts, uh, they are desperate. And I can uh, tell you that no crew would be uh, happy to leave them behind. But their constraints are so much, the load factor, you cannot carry beyond a certain number of uh, people, so they have to be left behind. But this is now going on, it's like a sky train. The Americans are evacuating, we are evacuating, the entire European countries are evacuating. So I feel that there is a certain amount of tacit understanding with the Taliban in today's context that these evacuations are happening.